Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Dear students, I am Shafa Shahidur Chandra Baloch, lecturer in the Department of Basic Science and Related Studies, Meran University of Engineering and Technology, Jamshoro. In this series, we are going to discuss the subject Linear Algebra and Analytical Geometry. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. Dear students, in this lecture, we will discuss introduction to the matrices, types of matrices and some related problems. So let us start with the matrices. So the matrix by definition is a rectangular arrangement of the numbers or elements in rows and columns enclosed in a square bracket or parenthesis. Or we can also call the matrix having the following rectangular arrangement of the numbers in this order or a rectangular arrangement of the elements in the following order is called the matrix. Is called the matrix. Now something to be noted here that it is the rectangular arrangement of the elements. So what is rectangular meaning here? In the rows and columns. So what does it mean here rows and columns? So let us see this. So rectangular meaning. This simply, simply means that when you arrange the elements, you will get a shape of the rectangular. For example, in this matrix, we can have a shape of a rectangular. However, the rows of the matrix is these arrangement of the elements in horizontal form are known as the rows. So here we have the first row. So these elements A11, A12, A13 are indicating the first row. Similarly, the elements A21, A22, A23 and up to the A2N indicating the elements of the second row or row 2. And finally, we have A M1, M2, and so on up to A M N, indicating the M row, the elements in the M row. So we can also denote the row one, row two, or row M by R1, R2, or R M. In similar manner, the vertical arrangement of the numbers is called the column. For example, the elements A11, A21 up to A M1 are the elements of the first column. So we can indicate this by column 1 or C1 and similarly the elements 1, 2, 2, 2 and M2 are the elements in the second column so which is indicated by C2 and similarly the remaining uh, columns are C3 and up to the Cn. Now note that the matrices are denoted by the capital letters such as the capital letters A, B or C or any other letter is used to denote or are used to denote the uh, matrix. Now, furthermore, the elements are numbered by similar corresponding similar letters, such as the matrix. If we say this is a matrix A, then the corresponding corresponding elements of this matrix are indicated by A. However, the A11 indicating the element in the first row, first column. So the elements are indicated by similar corresponding similar letters or the numbers, or sometimes we might have functions inside the uh, matrix in the form of the elements of the matrices. Now note that here when we listen the word matrices this means more than one matrix. More than one matrix. Now let us see which of the following arrangement is called matrix. So which of the following arrangement form the matrix or is the matrix? So part one, the matrix A or one arrangement given by the A. And in this case, we can see there is a square bracket used to arrange the number. Furthermore, the numbers are arranged in the rows and the columns. So there are two rows and three columns. And if you construct the lines, over all side of these elements we will form a shape of the rectangular so which can be seen here so elements are arranged in the square brackets and they form a shape of the rectangular so this a is the matrix or part one is the matrix so yes this is a matrix similarly the arrangement in second indicated by the letter b and now here we can again see there is the arrangement of the numbers is enclosed by the square bracket and furthermore there is one row and there are five columns indicated by these five numbers. So furthermore, if you construct the break, uh, straight lines and close them and you will get a form of the rectangular which can be seen in this. 
so we can form or we can say that b is a rectangular arrangement of the number so b is a matrix in the third one the arrangement is indicated by the letter c now we can notice that in this the elements are arranged and separated by the commas and furthermore they are not enclosed by the square bracket or parenthesis instead they have used the middle bracket so which is a notation for set so c is the set not a matrix so we can say that c is not matrix in part 4 the arrangement is indicated by d now furthermore they are arranged and enclosed by the square brackets but if you arrange the lines and draw uh, join them you will get a shape of that is not a rectangular so this is not a rectangular shape it is not a rectangular so hence we can say d is not a matrix in part 5 the arrangement is indicated by the letter e now in that case the parenthesis is used to indicate a matrix but now here we can also see that numbers are separated by the commas so due to this commas the arrangement is not a matrix let us see more about the matrices or matrix now let us take a matrix a now in this case we have to extract the rows and columns of this matrix a so we can write this here the row one of this matrix is indicated by the four elements one two three four so we can write this as r1 row one contains the four element one two three four and similarly the row two consists of the four elements which are here five six seven eight so we can extract them and then we can write in this form one uh, five six seven and eight similarly we can also extract the columns as well so for the first column the elements are one and five so we can write the c1 the first column consists of the elements one and five we can write in this way similarly column two which consists of the elements two and six so this will be two and six here c3 the column third column which consists of the elements three and seven so we can write this in this way three and seven and further we have c4 as column four which consists of the two elements four and eight in this so this will be four and eight what about the matrix b can you try this one can you extract the rows and columns of this matrix b so try this one let us see what is the subscript notation for a matrix so let's suppose we have a matrix a now it can be seen this matrix consists of the m rows indicated by a1 means first row a2 second row and then am indicating the m rows and similarly vertical elements uh, vertical distribution of the elements there is indicated by second sub subscript notation one one indicating the first column second column the third column so now in not subscript notation form we can write a matrix a in this way a is a matrix whose elements are of the form of a i j so i and j are in the subscript notations now furthermore where i varies from 1 to m there are m rows that we can see here first row second row third row and so on up to m row and the j indicates the columns number of columns here first column second column third column and so on up to the n columns so here we have first column means column one column two column three and up to we have n columns so this is the subscript notation for the matrix a for example let's suppose we take an example a is a matrix having the elements 1 minus 1 2 0 5 6 so if we want to know what is the element position at first row first column so this is the element position at first row first column that is equals to 1 if we have to find the element at the sec, uh, second row third column so in second row third column this is your second row and third column means third column here the element will be equals to 6 
similarly if you are asked to find out the element at second row second column so this will be position 8 second row means first and second row and that second column of first column to second column the element will be 5 so in this way we can find out the position of the element using the subscript notations indicated by i row and jth column the i row and jth column so now let us see what is the order of the matrix now order of the matrix actually indicates or tells us about the number of elements in a matrix for example this matrix a consists of the m rows and m columns so we can call this as m by n number of matrices will be there so we can call this as number of element And we can read this as m by n is the order of the matrix. Now let us find out the order of the following matrices. So in the first part in the matrix A, we see that there are three rows and three columns. So we can say the order of the matrix. Order of matrix A is 3 by 3 and similarly in matrix B the order of the matrix B is one by four in matrix C the order of the matrix The order of the matrix C is 3 by 1 and furthermore in matrix 4 that is D the order of matrix D is 2 by 3 and similarly the order of the matrix E E is simply one by one. Now notice that these these notations are including the order of the matrices. Furthermore, from this order we can find out the number of the elements, which we call size as well. So number of the elements in A is obtained by the order of the matrix so if you multiply 3 with 3 you will get 9 so there are 9 elements we can see in this matrix A similarly there will be 4 elements in the matrix B and there will be 3 elements in the matrix C and there will be 6 elements in the matrix D and similarly there is only 1 element in the matrix E so in this way the order of the matrix give us the number of the elements present in the matrix now let us see what is the rectangular matrix and what is, an, what is the square matrix. So if the number of rows and columns in a matrix say matrix A having the elements in the form of A, I, J in which there are M rows and N columns. So this matrix is said to be rectangular if the number of rows is not equal to column which implies that matrix is a rectangular matrix so a matrix is said to be rectangular matrix if the number of rows is not equal to number of columns so we can write this as m not equals to n when our order of the matrix is m by n and similarly when we have m equals to n means number of rows is equals to the number of column which means that we have a square matrix for example the matrix a containing the element 1 2 3 4 5 6 is a rectangular matrix because there are two rows and three columns so we can also write the order of the matrix as well so a is a rectangular matrix consists of two rows and three columns so we write the order of this matrix a is two by three so now the matrix b is called a square matrix because there are two rows and two columns so normally when we have a square matrix we call its order in this way order 2 
if we have two rows and three columns similarly we write order three if we have three rows and three columns and if we have four rows and four columns we simply write order is four so this means it has two rows and th uh, two columns two by two we just didn't write it as order two now let us discuss more about the type of matrices now for the horizontal and vertical matrices row and column matrices so what is horizontal and vertical matrices so there are conditions to be satisfied suppose a is a matrix defined by the elements a i j it has the order m by n so if the number of rows m are less than or smaller than the number of columns then we say the matrix is horizontal otherwise it will be called vertical matrix if number of rows are larger than the number of columns now further for the row and column matrices they are also called the row and column vectors if the matrix contain a single row it is called a row matrix if it contains single column then matrix is called column matrix or column vectors so let us see some of the examples in the first example we have the matrix containing the elements 1 minus 1 0 in this matrix the number of column is equals to 1 so it is a single column which implies that the matrix is a column matrix column matrix or column vector similarly in third one there is only one row so since the matrix contains single row so you can call this matrix as a row matrix or row vector however in the second and fourth example the matrix the number of rows are two here we have two rows and three columns so we can write it as number of rows is less than number of columns which implies that this matrix is a horizontal matrix and similarly as we can see in this fourth one the number of rows are three there are three rows and then two columns so we can write it as number of rows are larger than the number of columns so in this case this matrix is called vertical matrix so now suppose that we have a matrix a of order m by n having the elements in the form of a i j now this matrix is said to be real matrix the real matrix if all the elements are real numbers this will be called a complex matrix if at least one of the element a i j at least one of the element is complex number because real number are also called complex number if the imaginary part is zero so this is the distinction between the real and complex matrices depending upon the types of elements are real or at least one of the element is complex now in this example the first one is the complex matrix because there are three elements the first element first row first column the element at the second row first column uh, and element at the second row second column these are elements are complex numbers so this matrix is a complex matrix and similarly in second one all the numbers are real numbers so this metric is a real matrix now let us discuss some more types of matrices depending upon the elements let us discuss some other important types of matrices so first among them is zero matrix all elements are zero so this is a matrix in which all elements are zero regardless of the order of the matrix there may be a rectangular or a square matrix similarly a unit matrix in which all elements are equal to 1 again regardless of the order of the matrix the zero matrices are denoted by the letter O so if suppose that we write O M by N then this will be called an order of the matrix M by N so if we write here O2 this means we have a square matrix of order 2 that is 0 0 0 0 all the elements are 0 in this matrix similarly if we write here O 2 by 3 this means the order of the matrix is 2 by 3 there are 2 rows and 3 columns so this will be 3 columns 2 rows are there 
So this will be a matrix of order 2 by 3, a null matrix. That is also called a null matrix. So this is a matrix of order 2 by 3 can be integrated by these elements. Similarly, if we write here 3 by 1, so this means it has 3 rows and 1 column. So this will be looked like, so this is a 0 matrix again. And having the elements all are equals to 0. For the general matrix, there is no special type of letter. We simply write, let's suppose we have matrix A and we say this is a unit matrix if it has all elements equals to 1. So if I take the elements is equals to 1, this will be called A as a unit matrix. Similarly, if I write here, suppose B matrix with the elements, this is a B matrix which is a unit matrix. Similarly, if I write another matrix C having the elements of this form, since all the elements are equal to 1, so this will be also called a unit matrix. So order of the first matrix A is 2 because it has two rows, two columns and in the square matrices we write only two to express the order and similarly in matrix B the order of this matrix is 1 by 3 so we can write it in this way 1 by 3 the matrix C has three rows two columns so we can write the order of this matrix is 3 by 2 before going to the other types of matrices we must know what is the diagonal element of a matrix so let us see what are the diagonal elements. If a matrix is a square matrix and elements which are position at i is equals to j such as at the position of the element a 1 1 means first row first column this element the element which is position at second row second column where i is equals to j and similarly the element at third row third column i is equals to j the element at fourth row fourth column i is equals to j so similarly the element at nth row nth column so these elements are called generally the diagonal elements for example suppose we have three matrices a b and c so in the first matrix which has which is a square matrix order 2 then the elements which are at the position first row first column and second row second column such as the elements 1 and 0 are the diagonal elements. Similarly, in matrix, in matrix B, the element at the origin first row, first column, second row, second column, and third row, third column are the diagonal elements. Similarly, in matrix C, hence there is only one element origin at first row, first column, so this is only diagonal element. Let us discuss some of the important types of matrices and square matrices. So, one is the diagonal matrix, other is the scalar matrix, and then we have the identity matrix. What are the diagonal matrix? Now remember that this is the type of square matrix in which all the known diagonal elements in which the ith row and jth column position is not same. So all the known diagonal elements are all zero and among the diagonal elements at least one of them is known zero. Then we have the scalar matrix. It is a diagonal matrix. Now once we obtain a diagonal matrix now from this property of the matrix or type of the matrix we can update another condition that the diagonal elements are all equal to a scalar k k is a scalar that is not equal to 0 because if it is 0 then the matrix will become a null or 0 matrix and then identity matrix now again it is a type of a scalar matrix now it is updated version of the scalar matrix in which all the diagonal elements are now is equals to 1. So now let us see some of the examples. So let us see the first matrix. Now in this all the known diagonal elements which are 0, which are position at first row, second column, first row, third column, and then second row, first columns, second row, third column, and then third row, first column, third row, second column. These all are the known diagonal elements which are 0. And further the diagonal elements which are position at first row first column second row second column third row third column which is 1 minus 1 and 2 these are non zero so this is a diagonal matrix now similarly in second example again we have the known diagonal elements so all the known diagonal elements are zero which can be seen here and then here and then among the diagonal elements which are 1 0 0 at least one of them is non zero so here we have 1 is non zero so this is again example of the diagonal matrix now let us move for the scalar matrix. Let's suppose now in the first example we have a diagonal matrix because the are the known diagonal elements are zero, 
and further in the diagonal elements are is equal to the same scalar k so that is why this matrix is a scalar matrix similarly an example another example the square root is equal to minus 5 here k is equal to minus 5 which this means that all the diagonal elements are same equals to minus 5 and then known diagonal elements are 0 so this is a form of what scalar matrix now in the first example we can see that this is a form of a scalar matrix because here we have the scalar k because the all diagonal elements are same and known diagonal elements are 0 so hence since it has updated from condition that this is scalar is equals to 1 which make this this scalar matrix as an identity matrix so now we can indicate the identity matrix in this way i2 i indicates the identity matrix and 2 indicates of order 2 so this is the order 2 of order identity matrix in which the scalar is equals to 1 similarly next example we have again the three diagonal elements which are same and known diagonal elements are 0 which make this as a scalar matrix and then further since this scalar is equal to 1 and the diagonal elements are same and that is equal to 1 so this make up an identity matrix of order 3 so we can write this in this way this is the identity matrix indicated by i3 similarly if i ask you to find out the identity matrix of order 1 then we can write this in this way and of order 4 then this will be equals to 1 0 0 0 and then 0 1 0 0 and then 0 0 1 0 and then finally 0 0 0 and 1 so this is an example of identity matrix of order 4 furthermore the elements of the identity matrix can be written in this form of a i j these are the elements of the matrix in which we have ones on the diagonal elements indicated by i is equals to j and zeros on the known diagonal elements in which i not equals to j upper and the lower triangular matrices so the upper mat triangular matrix is the matrix in which is a square matrix and second thing is that all the elements below this principal diagonal elements are zero it is a square matrix and all elements below the principal diagonal elements are zero and lower triangular matrix is a square matrix in which all the elements above the principal diagonal elements are zero so the mathematical notation form we can write the elements in this way a i j is equal to 0 means all those elements of the matrix are 0 which are below the principal diagonal indicated by i more than j and similarly all those elements of the matrix are 0 which are above the diagonal elements indicated by i less than j so let us see some examples for them now in the first example here we can first see that the elements on the diagonals which is which is here and below th these are the principal diagonal elements and below these elements all the elements are zero so hence we can say that this is your upper triangular matrix similarly in second one the diagonal elements or principal diagonal elements are one five seven position at first row first column second row second column third row third column above these elements all the elements are zero so that's why this is called the lower triangular matrix and third one we can see the diagonal elements are zero here and below these elements the element is also zero so that's why this is called the upper triangular matrix and further in the fourth one the diagonal elements are minus one and seven and above these elements the element is zero that's why this is called the lower triangular matrix now further it may be noted that a matrix is said to be triangular matrix if either it is upper triangular or it is a lower triangular matrix thanks for the watching this video so inshallah in the next lecture we will discuss some other uh, some algebraic operation on the matrices and on the basis of these operations we will discuss some other types of matrices thank you